I didn't expect to be sitting down this late to do a podcast. But uh, as I've been kind of dealing with some other stuff, suddenly something piqued my interest and I have an angle much like Kendrick Lamar found an angle on Drake Michigan football found an angle on all of that and is using it to its advantage yes I'm going to talk about the Kendrick Lamar Drake beef as it pertains to Michigan football because Michigan just picked a side we're going to talk about that and we're actually going to talk about football things and basketball on this episode of Lockdown Wolverines You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Wednesday. We are back and doing it. Locked On Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. I'm your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. I have been in something of a medication filled loop, a uh, fueled loop rather. Uh, as I'm trying to recover from my the infection that I have. And uh, in kind of my recovery, I have been, I'm telling you this for a reason. In my recovery, I have been absolutely scintillated by this Kendrick Lamar Drake beef that's been going on. I know everything about it now. I've parsed all the words. I've, I've watched as much content as I possibly could. Uh, in in the uh, in the last uh, really just the last like five days, Saturday is when it started for me. Now I am a Kendrick Lamar fan. I haven't really listened much to to anything uh, that he's put out recently outside of these diss tracks, uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Uh, I only listened to it like twice, uh, which is kind of weird for me because I listened to uh, uh, the all the other albums like incessantly. And I know it's probably a little weird for little Christian old me here coming up talking something very pop culture here. But why am I going to bring this up? Because Michigan did something tonight that I think is absolutely incredible. Now, I'm not going to get too far into the, uh, you know, what they're saying. I'll let that all be for those of you who want to delve deep. I will give you the cliff notes to tell you why this is this is hilarious and why this is amazing. So, um, it, it, if to my knowledge, it, it started well beyond uh, the, uh, the J. Cole and uh, Drake collaboration in which Kendrick was invited and declined. Uh, it's, there's been a long-standing feud between Kendrick Lamar and Drake. And I know for a lot of you, I'm speaking uh, French right now, so just bear with me. But uh, basically, they, they had their little collaboration uh, Kendrick Lamar didn't want to be a part of it. I think there was like a light diss in there. Uh, and then Kendrick collaborated with Future and Metro Boomin. And then they, uh, and then he said, there, there ain't no big three. There's just big me. And that kind of started the beef as it ended up uh, really going. Uh, from there, Drake released two songs and was trying to goad him on social media, was calling him short, has small feet, you know, just. You know, very light insults for the most part. There were some other things like co-opting uh, AI to uh, mimic Tupac Shakur and Snoop Dogg. The Tupac estate got it taken down. Uh, the Drake, uh, Drake was goading, goading him a little bit and apparently brought Kendrick's family into it. And then Kendrick, after several weeks, finally responded with euphoria last week, Tuesday. And then uh, there was nothing until Friday morning. Kendrick dropped 616 in L.A. And both of those were like, you don't want to do this, Drake. I've, I'm, I'm going to call you out a little bit, but you don't want to do this. Uh, Friday late evening, if my timeline is correct, uh, Drake drops Family Matters. It's supposed to be the red button. It's supposed to be the kill shot for uh, Kendrick Lamar. And then uh, I, I don't really know the time timeline. Somewhere between six minutes and an hour, Kendrick responds with meet the grams which was clearly recorded well in advance and that was essentially the kill shot making very bold allegations uh in his uh his diss track there uh but kendrick wasn't done he doubled up again for the second time by releasing what ends up being a west coast club banger not like us which was kind of a basically a celebration of the victory 
Uh, Drake ended up responding on Sunday. Uh, Drake fans, people who are ardently Drake fans, uh, felt like he absolved himself, even though he was very much on the defense and not offense. And uh, But right now, the internet is mostly abuzz with Kendrick being the winner. And it's beyond just you know, hurling words at each other. It's hurling very bold, salacious allegations at each other really in the, in, uh, over the weekend. So what, how does this tie in with Michigan football? Well, Michigan decided they were team Kendrick because no less than like a half hour ago, Michigan did the, the social media managers of Michigan got wise to it. And they posted a video of them with the rings, the confetti, the national championship, all, all this video with all of these wonderful moments to celebrate the, the way the 2023 season ended. Along with the song, Not Like Us, just the chorus saying, they not like us, they not like us. It is a brilliant stroke to really inject yourself into what is currently a cultural phenomenon beyond just the hip hop realm. Cause like, listen, I listen to some hip hop, but it's pretty much exclusively Christian hip hop. It's like Lecrae. Uh, someone brought up Dax uh, on the uh, on three message board when uh, in this general discussion, uh, it's mostly whatever Sarah listens to. Uh, I, I, I like a lot more of the dance beat stuff. Cause I took a, uh, I took a music produ- production course with Kygo two summers ago. Uh, so even though my, my heart is still with metal, uh, I, I like to be well-rounded with it. And um, nonetheless, it is absolutely captivating. And it's the, why is it important for Michigan football to do this? Honestly, it, just for the sake of uh, like injecting yourself into it, right? Having a moment that can jump into the virality of the moment. It's something that recruits will see and be like, okay, that's cool. We got to remember who was the, who was the top dog. <laughs> no pun intended for the Kendrick fans there. Who was the top dog of the college football season last year? It's excellent marketing. And this is the type of thing that I haven't normally expected Michigan to be able to like understand the moment and co-opt. I would have said that they should have done it earlier. USC had already done it. That makes sense being very close to Kendrick Lamar's native Compton. West Coast school, West Coast banger, all of that kind of stuff. But nonetheless, Michigan jumping in. I know this ain't that serious. I know there's going to be rivals out there that are going to complain about this. There's going to be Mich- old, you know, blue hairs that are going to complain about me talking about this. I just think it's a very cool moment, and I think that Michigan took advantage of it. I wish they would have done it, you know, more like you know Sunday or Monday. Uh, but uh, it is a wise use of what is currently a, co- a pop culture phenomenon. The only thing that would make it better is if they found a way to incorporate uh, Metro Boomin's distrumental BBL Drizzy. That would be the only way to, to get over. I told you, I've been paying way too much close attention to this. <laughs> My TikTok feed is almost exclusively. It, it's gone from, uh, from fragrances and Christian teaching. The little bit of sports mixed in to being 90% this rap feud it's been absolutely phenomenal content shout out to josh Barr at jadicky because he and i have been talking off uh off air about it and uh it's tremendous content let's get into some actual football um not really actual football but what people are thinking about michigan because you're starting to see these two early top 25s and uh big 10 power rankings and i have some thoughts uh as i've kind of looked at some of these things uh so let's get into that and let's do it here in just a moment before we do passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also it keeps your ride or die alive ebay motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die you'll always find exactly what you're looking for and with ebay guaranteed fit your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with ebay motors you're burning rubber not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want it's easy to make your car the mvp and bring home huge wins keep your ride or die alive of <laughs> yeah, alive at ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers All right.
right, so we're starting to see uh, a lot of different people drop their post-spring top 25s, their Big Ten power rankings, all of that. Joel Klatt, he weighed in. Uh, he's got Michigan coming in about where I would expect them to be, number eight. Um, he has Michigan at number eight behind uh, behind Alabama, behind Utah. Utah makes sense to me because of uh, Cam Rising being back and being in the Big 12, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you've got uh, USA Today Sports, the mothership for Wolverines Wire, who had Michigan much lower than I would have had them at uh, number, was it 11? Uh, I had, I, I kind of did like a, what, you know, how does, how does this look? You know, this 25 look said like, where's the rankings? I said they were too low. Uh, I had Ohio state too high at number three, just by one. I think that Oregon is probably, I, I think that they're probably better than Ohio state, uh, right now because they've at least got the quarterback kind of worked out. Um, and then you've got Tom Fornelli at CBS sports who has Michigan as his number three, big 10 team. Uh, and, uh, one more thing I want to look at, which I did not get a chance to, uh, is, uh, where, uh, Dennis Dodd, he has his post spring top 25. Uh, he has Georgia at number one, Ohio state at number two. He has Michigan all the way down at number 12 behind Penn state. I'm not going to hate that too much. Penn state does have a returning quarterback. I think that means something. Nonetheless, I do think that people are spending their, like I, I can, not necessarily knock anyone from a national perspective and saying, listen, Michigan has got a bit of an upheaval is the word that I used a couple of times in articles today. Because, yes, the complete coaching change on the defensive so the side of the ball, head coaching, uh, obviously, going from Jim Harbaugh to Sharon Moore, no more J.J. McCarthy, no more Blake Corum. However, I, I do take some seriousness out of what I said to Josh Pate, even though he said, Hey, I meant that kind of tongue in cheek. Uh, but uh, how Josh said, like about having all these first round picks, Michigan right now is projected to have four guys. I think that that'll probably hold barring some kind of injury. I could see them getting up to six. I think Donovan Edwards could absolutely be a first round pick. And I think that Jay Sean Barham, they look at him internally as like, we got ourselves a first round pick there. I think people are underselling Michigan a little bit. Because and now I look at like Dennis Dodds here, like there's a couple here where I'm like, LSU at ten, Notre Dame at eight. I, I those are right now prove it teams. Michigan's at least proved proved it, even though it was under the previous regime. Uh, I think Joel Klatt's more right having Michigan at number eight. I see the I see them as being like a seven or eight type. I think it's a top ten team as of right now. And even though that they could be two and zero, oh, they could be one and one by uh, by the time we get to week three. At the same time, I think that that, you know, when you look at what Texas is ranked by everyone, Texas is four on Dodd. Uh, I don't have the other ones up because I just X'd out the window. But Texas is typically looked at as being kind of like the number two ish team in the country has a lot returning, including Quinn Ewers. Um, but Mi Michigan's defense should still be among, if not the best defense in the country. Uh, you look at the fact that they lost a lot of players. Of course, you've got barely any returning starters down in the like 128th in the country in terms of returning production, according to uh, ESPN's Bill Connolly. Uh, that is just in terms of nominal starters, because it's kind of hard to look and say, Kenneth Grant, uh, Derek Moore, and Josiah Stewart, Michigan trusted you to be on the field in some of the most pivotal moments of the season. And we're not going to call you a starter, right? Like they played starters minutes. They might not have had their name, uh, on the list of guys who were out there on the first snap. But obviously, Michigan has uh, a lot of returning talent coming back on defense, has a similar style, simil you know, similar staff, although different names and faces, uh, guys who certainly are really good at coaching. I, I just think back to a, a conversation I had uh, about two months ago. I guess it would have been three months, maybe four months ago now. Time is a flat circle. Um, th for with the former Michigan coach who – Set when I said like yeah they're they're looking at Brian John Marie and it was like he is an amazing coach like I understand 2020 didn't look good for him there and all of that but he is an amazing coach so um and that was not necessarily the uh, the uh, the thought process when it came to some other guys that were up and running uh, supposedly for that position so 
Um, I think that they've got a lot of really good pieces. Offensively, yes, they have to figure out the quarterback. And that is a huge part of it, right? That's why I can't sit there here and say Michigan is in a spot where it can repeat for sure. Uh, but Tom Fornelli, I thought, had a really kind of a bright spot that maybe others aren't saying. It's like, don't count out Michigan from winning the Big Ten, right? Just because the, you have the shiny object. You have Ohio State, which went all in on NIL. You have uh, Oregon, which uh, kind of did the same thing. Transfer portal, bringing in two top-tier quarterbacks. And Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore really look like they've reloaded, already have a lot of talent, really look like they're poised. Remember, Nebraska thought that they were going to come in in 2011 and run things they did not. So, uh, or was it 2010? I don't remember what year, but they thought they were going to come in and run things. I know Michigan played them first in 2011. They, they, and it didn't work out that way, right? So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Pac-12 schools kind of had that same kind of thing happen with them, right? So, if it's that, then for Michigan, if, if it ends up being like kind of a redux of, uh, you know, they play Washington this year, but if it ends up being a redux of this last Washington game and uh, Michigan can just kind of dominate, then it comes down to them in Ohio State again. So we'll see. I, I think that people are giving credence to Michigan, but at the same time, I feel like there maybe needs to be a little bit more. Uh, not, not saying that, uh, that being at like number 11 or 12 or whatever is terrible, but you, we look around at some of these other schools and you look at what Michigan returns. I think that people are underestimating where Michigan can be. Now, I've said it time and time again. I have no idea what this Michigan team is going to be because it could have an absolutely anemic offense. And we've seen what that looks like in 2017, having an offense that cannot generate. And then the defense eventually falls apart, right? That could happen. You need an offense. You need that complimentary version of what Michigan has been doing the last couple of years. That's what's been different, right? Is being able to sustain the defense and defense, not having a fatal flaw, uh, not having uh, obvious, signs to be stolen i don't expect that to be the case this is a much smarter staff um i think than what they had back in those other years so nonetheless i think that uh, michigan is in a really good spot people i think are underestimating them to some degree i think clad is properly estimating michigan and is kind of like show me again but i think it's funny because if it was georgia in the same situation coming out of last year let's say kirby jump ship elevates uh let let's uh it was Todd Munkin still there I, th- I think he was uh I think he left last year right like elevates Todd Munkin to the uh the head coaching position I think people would still look at Georgia and say even with a bunch of losses even losing Stetson Bennett and everything like that I think people would look at it and be like that's that's a team that's going to repeat Michigan's not going to get that kind of love uh understandably because it is more of a developmental program than it is a recruiting one at this point and uh I just kind of have to live with that. But that's my thoughts on those. Let's talk a little bit about Dusty May because we met with him yesterday and I thought he was just excellent. 33 minutes of just absolute excellence. So we'll get to that in just a moment. All right, game off. We've got to pause here to talk about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. There's just so much good stuff in the game. Monopoly Go, you team up with friends for time tournaments. You can do that. You don't have to do that, but you can where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes that you can unlock. There's so much that you can get. Unique stickers you can trade with your friends to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing place pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you want to go up against them, smash their buildings, heist their vaults, all that kind of stuff. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every single day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Pressure or... treasure and digging for pleasure as well if you're just you know having some fun on the game (laughs) robot pachinko machine there's always new timed events hope you win big like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies there's always something fun to discover in monopoly go so get off the bench and go download it now for free at the google play or app store game on we're going to continue on here in just a moment before we do let's get straight to the point you want to grow your portfolio to deal with rising costs of inflation Pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and your financial freedom, right? And considering where the world is right now, no better place to do that than Yahoo Finance, where you can get access to the news, the data, and the tools you need in in order to help you reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. 
They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage account accounts for a new, sorry, you, sorry, not a new, but just a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. A comprehensive perspective is what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users every single month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. All right, let's finish out talking about Dusty May. Uh, he was absolutely, Michigan's got the right guy. I, I, That's kind of like the takeaway when like we end the press conference, all of us kind of look around, you know, start having your little conversations uh, with colleagues and you kind of assess what just happened. I don't, like with Juwan, and, you know, we, we all, you know, like Juwan, especially those of us who've kind of been around uh, for a long time has followed it. Like, right. I used to pretend to be Jawan Howard or more so Chris Weber, but you know, I, I pretend to be all the fab five when I was younger. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to not love anyone from the fab five, but when Jawan was hired, it was kind of like, well, let's see how this goes. You know, it wasn't like a, Oh yeah, this, this guy right here that he knows what's going on, but just, we, we kind of felt that coming out of the introductory press conference and feel that one again, right? Like, okay, he's winning press conferences at the very least, but I mean, you see it in action. He's been relentless. The transfer portal, like this is a team on paper that looks absolutely loaded and it looks like it's got depth, right? Like that you've got Vlad Golden as a starter and then you've got a guy that was the, actually ranked higher in the transfer portal as your backup. Like you've got pieces and he says he wants to kind of see it like something like a 24, 16 split, I think is what the numbers were. Maybe it was, uh, maybe it was more like 26, 26, 14, I think is what I just said. I don't remember 20, 20, something like that uh, in, in minutes, right? You're, you're looking up and down and he says like, well, listen, we needed more guards. I mean, they've got guards galore. They've got wings galore. You, you've got a good mix of guys who have experience. You've got a mix of You've got those guys. You've got uh, also uh, players who uh, are coming in as recruits. And it just, they says they got one more spot open. Uh, Jace Howard is apparently coming back. And uh, it just, it, it, everything looks like it's kind of moving in the right direction. Uh, and then on top of it, like he, he had said in his introductory press conference, like we want to win right away. This is not a rebuilding year. Asked yesterday, how, how do you feel about this? And he said, I feel actually better about it now than when I said it. He's confident. He knows what he's looking for. He's going out and getting it. When it came to the transfer portal, he was like, I'm surprised that we basically got every target we wanted. There's only a couple. There's only a handful that we can, like, you can say Connor Isigian. They didn't get him, but everyone else, it was like, Michigan offers this guy. This guy's going to Michigan. It's, it was really just an incredible showcase of his prowess. Now, the next thing is just seeing it on the court, and we've seen it on the court in, at FAU, taking a school like FAU to the Final Four. I mean, that some people call it flash in the pan, but, I mean, you have to be doing something right to be able to take a group of five school and make them a constant NCAA tournament team and get them to the point where they are able to beat teams decisively. So if, as long as this team comes together, and, and keeping in mind there, there are some connections, Michigan basketball pointed out on – uh, social media that uh, Namari Burnett and uh, Vlad Golden played together at uh, Texas Tech. Uh, you've got um, the Alabama, other Alabama kid coming in. Uh, I don't think that they had much overlap, uh, Namari Burnett and him. And I forget his name for some reason. Uh, you even have some rivalry overlap, right? Like uh, with uh, the Auburn, uh, Sam Walters, is the Alabama kid, right? Um, and then um, Trey, point guard. It, it's it. This is all feels like it's going to work, but we'll see. But he was really impressive, and uh, I I'm actually very excited to see what this looks like. Uh, I'm not excited for the time when we're finally going to get to see it because that means it's going to be cold, and I'm not ready for that. Anyway, that's going to do it for this. 
episode. We will be back uh, on Thursday at probably early. And uh, if, if, if we're going on Thursday, we're doing it early. That's how I'm going to say it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you soon. Peace.